Right, hello Year 10. So uh, today we are going to uh, carry on with our work on the properties of waves and last lesson we looked at reflection. So all waves can reflect and the example I gave you was light waves. Um, today we're going to look at refraction and I'm going to go through the required practical which you would have done in class, um, which you will do when we come back. Um, but the first thing I'm going to do, you'll notice, is I have put up the answers to yesterday's reflection questions. So I suppose the first thing you need to do is pause the video, go through the answers to yesterday's questions, and mark your own scores. Now, this isn't really a formal test. It was just, just to see how you got on, really. Uh, it'll probably take you about five, six, seven minutes to go through the answers. So firstly, pause the video now and do that, please. Okay, welcome back. So we know that light can be reflected, um, but light can also be transmitted through certain materials. Now, um, for example, we know that light waves can travel through air. But we also know that light can travel through glass. Okay, both air and glass are transparent, so light is able to be transmitted through them. And again, hopefully you're noticing the words I'm using, transmitted. That's what you'd need to use in an exam. So Light can be trans light waves, sorry, can be transmitted through both air and through glass, uh, through other mediums like water. Okay, but here is the thing: are these materials all the same? And the obvious answer is no, they're not. So I just want you to think for a moment: what is the difference between air, glass, and water? I mean, the one thing they all share is they're transparent. Light can be transmitted through them. But what is different about them? What makes those materials fundamentally different from each other? Okay, so hopefully I have a bit of a think about that. Um, the key difference is their density. Okay, so air is not a particularly dense material. You can just wave your hand and move your hand very easily through it. Water, you could put your hand in water and you could, you can certainly feel more resistance as you move your hand. So water is denser than air. And of course, glass is solid and you can't really push through that at all. OK, but it is transparent. OK, so different materials might transmit light. OK, say, so for example, waves can transmit through different materials, but something happens based on their density. OK, so the experiment that you would have done would have been something like this. So what you would have had was a glass block here and then you would have got your ray boxes and you would have projected a beam of light through your ray box. Now, what I need to try and explain is happening here is essentially beam of light is going from air into a would have been glass material and then back into air again okay so we've got this so um just quickly move that over there so it's kind of out of the way what i will ask you to do is quickly pause the video and draw this but just leave it like this for now we're then going to label it up once i show you an animation of how it works so quickly pause the video um, but let, make sure you leave plenty of space to label up a diagram like this. Okay, off you go. Okay, so welcome back. Now, what I'm going to show you is an animation, and some of you might have seen this in year eight. However, we need to explain this in a slightly more complex way. Um, so this is basically what happens when a beam of light hits a glass block. This was the experiment that you were going to do. Okay, so see so your beam of light traveling notice that it slows down and then it speeds up again as it leaves the glass block now it goes straight but if you change the angle of the glass block you get this this bending effect the light's path has been changed uh, just a quick word of caution here don't say the beam of light has bent okay because it's not bendy it's still traveling in a straight line but the path of the beam of light has been changed it's been refracted okay so refraction is when a beam of light changes its path okay so let's see why that happens so if we carry on with the animation 
okay we can try and explain why this happens but to do that we need to be able to zoom in okay so let's zoom in now when the beam of light strikes the glass block at a 90 degree angle so basically going along the normal this is what happens the whole beam of light so the front of the wave of the beam of light if i just quickly run that back ever so slightly it all strikes the new medium the glass at the same point so the whole beam of light slows down at the same rate okay so we don't get a bending effect because it's going in at 90 degrees now that's very important look there's your refractive uh, surface and it's at 90 degrees okay but it does slow down now if we go in at an angle we get this bending effect why okay so once again we're going to zoom in onto the um onto the glass block now here comes our beam of light now I'm just going to pause it for a second right so there's the top of the beam and there is the bottom of the beam now watch very closely what happens now the top of the beam hits the glass before the bottom of the beam so if i just rewind that this part has hit the glass block so this section of the beam has slowed down whereas this section is still going slightly faster because it's still in air you can see it's still in a less dense material so this bit's going fast this bit's going slow and so what happens is it skews around like this forcing it to change direction like that okay and that is why we get this bending effect okay and then if we just carry on when it goes to the air it actually bends back the other way it does the same thing but in reverse and this is the diagram that we would draw so i'm going to draw this with you in a moment but i'll quickly just play this through for you so your beam of light comes in you have your normal showing a right angle to the refractive surface not reflective refractive there's your beam of light going through the glass block and then it bends back to its original path as it re-enters the air okay so firstly we need to be able to draw this so we're going to go back to our original diagram so here's our beam of light coming in. So what happens is our beam would change and bend like that, but then go back to its original path. Again, I'm apologies, I'm slightly rushing this. Uh, don't forget you need to draw your arrows to make sure you can spot the direction of it. Now, one thing you might be asked is describe the way in which the light bends. So we need to be able to do that so we are drawing the normal. So here is our angle of incident, just like we have on the, reflect, uh, the reflection experiment last lesson. That's our angle of incidence. I'm just gonna label that as I. And this is our angle of refraction, R. Now, just looking at that you should be able to see a difference with reflection okay with reflection the angle of incidence equaled the angle of reflection and actually sometimes you do get like a partial reflection like that okay but the angle of incidence whenever light or a wave goes into a material which is more dense like glass the angle of refraction is less than the angle of incidence. So let's just summarize that. Uh, I'll have to do it over here in quite small writing. Just change that. So when a wave goes into a material which which is flat, material which is more dense the angle of incidence 
is more than the angle of refraction. Okay, so it's one of the key things. All right, so a couple of things you need to know is you need to label this up like this. You've got the angle of incidence, you've got the angle of refraction, you need to make a note of this. And then you just need a very simple explanation as to why the um, uh, sorry, why the light bends in this way. So think about what I showed you on the animation, just two or three sentences. So essentially, one side of the beam, the, you could say the top of the beam, or one side of the beam, hits the refractive surface before the other side of the beam. So one part of the beam slows down before the other, and so it forces it to skew round at an angle. Okay, so pause the video and label a diagram like this in your book, please, with an explanation of why you get this bending. You could also add what happens when it leaves the glass block, because you could also draw the normal here. So the exact opposite happens. Now remember, the normal is at 90 degrees to the refractive surface. Here, the angle is quite narrow. But then here, when it goes to a medium which is less dense, like air, it bends away from the normal. So actually that's quite an important point because you can see here, how would we describe it? The beam of light, just get rid of that one because it's confusing. The beam of light bends towards the normal. If it was going on its original path, our beam of light would continue to travel like that, but it goes in this direction. So our beam of light bends towards the normal. That is how we describe it. Okay, in fact, I'm, that's, that's so important, I'm going to put that. So, it, the beam, no, we shouldn't say ends, but we're going to in this case, towards the normal, when it goes into a medium which is more dense, like glass, from air to glass. But it bends away from the normal when it goes in the opposite direction. Right, so there's quite a lot of detail to remember there, so please pause the video. If you need to play this section back, please do. Um, this will probably take you about uh, 10 minutes to draw it up and label it all properly with the correct details. Okay, welcome back. Now, these are a couple of um, activities that you can try for yourself. Um, so, at home. So, what you could do is you could get a pencil or pen and put it in a glass and we can try and explain what happens. Or you can get a coin in a sort of a shallow cup and see what happens. So, firstly, let's try the, I think it's the appearing coin that comes first. Yeah, so what you could do is this. We click on the jug, we pour water in, and the coin, which is sitting in the bottom, which we couldn't see, now seems to appear. How does that work? Right, so if we do a cross section of the cup, there's our coin sitting on the bottom. Now, light is bouncing off the coin, but of course it can't bend over the rim of the cup, so we can't see it. However, if we add water to the cup, the light coming off refracts, so the beams of light hitting the coin, bouncing, but when it hits the refractive surface, it changes direction and bends into our eye. Now, you can actually try this one, it bends away from the normal. Let me just quickly rewind that for you so you can see. So there's our normal. As you can see, it goes from water, which is quite dense, to air, which is less dense. And so it bends, not carries on its original path, but it bends away from the normal into our eyes. And so we are able to see it. So you can actually try this one if you want. Um, and prove it for yourself. Okay, now the next one involves a pencil. How does it appear to be bent? Right, so once again, if we have a look at it like this, the pencil doesn't really bend. What happens is this section of the pencil, it refracts. So this bottom section here is refracting. However, this part remains straight. Your eyes follow the straight line, so it seems that the tip is higher up, and so therefore, we get this bending effect. 
Okay, so a couple of little tricks for you to try at home. Okay, so it's really important you understand that all waves have this property of reflection and refraction. We've used the example of light, but don't forget sound waves can reflect, that's an echo, um, and they can also refract through air. So for example, if you're shouting and you can hear someone through a wall, it's refracting slightly through a wall. Okay, now what I'm going to do is set you a research task for the remainder of the lesson about how something called an anglerfish uses refraction in order to um, uh, actually hunt. Now, this essentially is going to be uh, quite an extended study, so I'm actually going to make this go into two lessons. So, the way it is going to work is I'm going to post the links for you now, along with the. Um, so I'm going to put the task in assignments, um, and I'm going to post the links on the chat. Now, unfortunately, there's quite a lot of links. There's about several, about five or six different sources that you can use. Uh, I will post them in assignments, but I'll also post them on the chat group so that you can go to them. I want you to spend the remainder of the lesson, so that's probably about 20 minutes or so, um, actually doing the research. And then on Friday's lesson, what I would like to do is, I'll be online as always, but I'd like to jump straight on and I would like you to just start to create your poster describing refraction about how the angler fish uses refraction in order to successfully hunt. So essentially, you'll spend this lesson, the remainder of this lesson, accessing your resources, which I've highlighted online, uh, and doing your, you know, preparing your research, reading about it. You might need to do a little bit more on Friday as well. And then on Friday, you'll put together a poster on how the anglerfish uses refraction in order to successfully hunt. Okay, um, any questions on today's lesson, as always, I'll be online. I'll be online on Friday as well, um, and we'll see how you get on. So research for the rest of the lesson, and then on Friday, you're gonna use your research to complete the task, but I'll post a task up this lesson as well. If you really want to get started early, by all means you can, um, but really it should be for Friday's lesson. Okay, uh, good luck. See you later.